What's up animators and welcome to On The Go, a series where I show you short but useful nightmare tips within 5 minutes. Today we're doing render settings. Hit it. If you remember this, this is my live stream animation, but it looks like it's too laggy so I'm gonna have to throw a bunch of stuff out, one second. It is way worse than I thought. It's gonna take a little while. But I wanna use this project because he has the scene and the camera motion and whatnot, so... Just a life of an animator. Oh, it's been five minutes already. What an on-the-go episode. So if you want to access render settings, click this cog icon up here and go to render. First thing you can see is camera effect. If you take this off, all the effects you turn on in the camera, such as depth of field, bloom, lens dirt, and stuff like that, it's all gonna be turned off. You can toggle it here. And you may also notice the depth of field. You can control depth of field quality in here. And it's more noticeable with a larger blur size. You can see it gets a little bit more pixelated. Whereas with the quality, it looks more smooth. I'm sure you're familiar with SSAO. SSAO makes the objects darker when two faces or edges meet. It can be demonstrated like this. You can see if I mess with the power, the radius. You can even change the SSAO color for some reason. Or you can turn it off in general, but that makes the image a little bit flat. SSAO helps you keep the realism. Then you can turn off the shadows if you want to do that. And you can change the buffer size. For example, my sunlight buffer size is set to gigantic. If I turn this off to very small, you can see the quality of the shadows gets lower. If I rotate the sun, you can see what's going on. The buffer size is small and hence the shadows look the way they do. Set this back to gigantic. It's gonna give you a warning because it is more intense on your PC but you get better shadows as you see here. You can set the same quality for spotlight buffer size and point light buffer size. Then you have shadow blur quality if you put this all the way down shadows are gonna be pixelated. If you put this to say Two, you can see it's slightly blurry and the more you raise it up, the better the blur quality is gonna be. You can see what it does just by messing around with it. And then you have shadow blur size. If you increase that, the shadows are gonna be way more blurry or not blurry at all. So if you want pixelated shadows, you can just turn this off or set it to very low. And if you want blurry shadows, you can set it all the way up. Then you can turn on or off glow and it does what it does. I made a pretty good on the go episode about glow. You can click the eye corner here. I do recommend seeing it because I explain everything about it, even these settings in here. Finally, we've got AA, which stands for anti-aliasing, and what that does is affects the edges of the blocks. If I turn AA off, you can see the edges are very sharp, and if I turn AA back on, you can see the edges are smoothing out. That's just there to give you a more organic feel, because extremely sharp edges don't look realistic. And finally, we've got watermark. If I turn that on, you can browse for the watermark image, say if I want to browse for my logo, and you can position it on the left right or center for horizontal and vertical axes and you can change the scale like this you can change the alpha like this and when you export the animation there's gonna be a watermark there and that is pretty much everything about render settings <laughs> if you're interested in the rest of the settings sure i could make a tutorial on it but it's even better if you open it up and click the settings yourself to see what they do you're gonna learn the most if you fill around with it yourselves now that's all for me today hope you enjoyed and learned something new if you have any tutorial suggestions drop them down below i need your suggestions i'm running out of them and with that on the side, thanks for watching. Stay sharp.